Hello everyone and welcome to this week's sports podcast. It's Thursday evening, the 2nd of June 2022. Doing the podcast a little bit early this week because of the uh, bank holiday tomorrow for the Queen's Jubilee. So I thought I'd get on with it now and get out of the way because I think uh, a lot of people will be busy tomorrow, including myself. So without further ado, let's start with the uh, Champions League final last weekend. And unfortunately for Liverpool, they came out on the short end of the stick. We're losing 1-0 to the champions of Europe for 2022 and that's Real Madrid. Victors by one goal to nil, a winning goal in the middle of the second half by Vinicius Junior being the uh, difference between the two sides. Although the realistic difference between the two sides was uh, Thibaut Courtois in goals for um, Real Madrid. He made some fantastic saves and in my opinion was clearly the man of the match. Uh, Liverpool had the better of the game, more shots, many chances but they just couldn't put it to bed. And uh, actually Real Madrid had another goal which was disallowed uh, due to controversially um, with regards to an offside decision, they're still arguing about that now on social media. Um, I think the right decision was actually reached on the night, um, in my opinion, and the rules suggest it was, but hey, okay, it's done now. Disappointing for Liverpool, but they still had the celebration on Sunday to celebrate the uh, League Cup and the FA Cup that they won early in the season. Um, they've had a good season, and I'm sure they'll be back to fight uh, another day in 2022 in the uh, Championship playoff final last Sunday, Nottingham Forest defeated Wembley, uh, defeated Huddersfield at Wembley by one goal to nil. Um, again, Nottingham Forest uh, was a better team in the match. Um, Huddersfield could point to the fact that they should have had two penalties, definitely one, maybe a second. The one that was uh, not overturned um, by referee John Moss, or should I say VA after John Moss didn't give a penalty and booked the, the Huddersfield player for simulation. Probably was deemed as not being sufficient for overruling as a clear and obvious error. But it was the second incident where it was, which looked more of a penalty and they probably had a better case for that. But like I say, Forest were the better team on the day. I felt they deserved to win the match. And uh, congratulations to them on getting back into the Premier League for next season. It'd be nice to see them uh, in the top division again, I think, for the first time since 1999. OK. Um, in the National League playoffs, um, the finals this Sunday at the London Stadium, home of West Ham, and it will be contested by Solihull and Grimsby. Grimsby overcoming Wrexham last Saturday in their um, semi-final match by five goals to four after extra time in an amazing game. It was one all at half-time. Um, they took the lead just in the start of the second half. And Wrexham scored twice in the space of three minutes ago, three to up. Then Grimsby um, got it back to four, four all in normal time. Um, and then the winner came in the last couple of minutes of the second half of added time. Um, to surprise uh, Wrexham, who many felt would walk through these playoffs and make their way into the Football League alongside Stockport, but they've been eliminated and now they'll be looking towards next season. In the other game uh, on Sunday, Solihull were eventually comfortable winners against Chesterfield by three goals to one. Um, Solihull um, have been the team in form really in recent weeks, in fact for quite a while now, for probably a couple of months. and. Um, You've got to say, Solihull are the only team going into the playoffs that have never been in the Football League before. And they're the, probably the team at the moment look like doing it. But Grimsby have fought their way through and battled really hard both the eliminated game, elimination game and the semi-final to come out victors in um, after extra time. So you've got to say that maybe the look's on their side and Grimsby have got a massive following compared to Solihull. And a lot of people probably will want Grimsby to win. But um, on merit, you'd probably say that Solihull deserve it. But we'll see what happens on Sunday. I just hope it's going to be a good game. Um, and I'm going to be watching that, I'm sure. Um, moving away from domestic football now. Uh, and we're going to look at the uh, World Cup qualifiers. And unfortunately for Scotland, they were defeated last night by the Ukraine. Three goals to one. Um, it was... A pretty one-sided game really to be fair Ukraine could have won by more if you had me for Craig Gordon and go for Scotland it could have been six or seven one or two John McGinn missed a really good chance for for Scotland but other than that um, Ukraine seemed to be in control of the game from as soon as when Yarmolenko put them in the, head, the lead until the very late um, I think it was Dobrik who scored the third goal but it was in injury time it was already over for Scotland by then um, so they're out and now Ukraine going to face Wales on Sunday um, for the last spot uh, the European teams in the World Cup in Qatar in November and December. <clears throat> so we'll see if Wales can beat Ukraine, but judging by Ukraine's performance against Scotland overnight, it's going to be a difficult job for Wales. I think they'll find it tough. We've got some good players of Ukraine. Obviously, <clears throat> they're fighting for more of them that's like the place in the final. They're trying to show some pride and, you know, the people are backing Ukraine because of the war that's going on there at the moment. So I think most countries will want um, Scotland, uh, sorry, uh, Ukraine to beat Wales. 
apart from the Welsh people. So we'll see what happens anyway. But again, let's hope it's a good match and the better the best team win. Okay, moving away from football now, we're going to look at the uh, local cricket scene as we always do. And last weekend saw some uh, very good action. Um, after last weekend's results, we see Copley at our top of the table. Bradshaw up to second after their win. Um, just quickly to run through the results from uh, last weekend. Uh, Maiv and Roy beat Booth by six wickets. Bradshaw beat Triangle by four wickets. Um, Copley beat uh, Great Horton Park Chapel by 69 runs. Um, Ludden and Foot beat Illingworth by 28 runs in a low scoring game. Sorby Bridge beat Triangle by 55 runs. And Wally beat SBCI by 101 runs. Um, in the first game, Maiv and Royd against Booth. Um, Booth was 67 all out. Um, and they were basically taken apart by Tofek Ahmed, who took 6 for 45, and Joe Kershaw took 4 for 19. And then Maiv and Royd knocked off the 67 for loss of 4 wickets. Um, although Patrick Thomas did his best to try and derail Maiv and Royd by taking all 4 wickets that went down. He took 4 for 24. Um, but a comfortable victory for the champions there, uh, defending champions. So get the season back on track somewhat with that victory. Um, Bradshaw in their game against Thornton. Well, Thornton were bowled all out for 107. And uh, most of the damage was done by Aaron Buckley. I think I've mentioned that already uh, in a tweet early in the week. But he was uh, 6 for 24, Aaron took. And also it was his, included his 400th wicket in the top division in Halifax. Cricket League, so well done to Aaron. That's a fantastic achievement. So I'm getting an award from Captain Cy Collins. So yeah, well done, Aaron. And then when it came round to uh, Bradshaw's turn to bat, they scored 111 for six, and so they knocked the total off for the loss of just those six wickets. And Ross Power was a man who again fought in vain for his side. The Thornton taking four for 47, but it wasn't enough to see them home. And Bradshaw won fairly comfortably in the end there. Uh, Copley in their game, they scored. Copley scored 195 for nine when they batted first. Ollie Thorpe kept up his good run of form for this season. He scored 60 runs. Um, and it was Dominic Anderson who tried to restrict the Copley uh, uh, batsman as best he could with 4 for 42. Um, and then um, Great Horton Park Chapel, Chapel could only muster 126 for 9 in their response. Uh, Gav Whip doing most of the damage there for Copley for an air ball attack. He took 4 for 29 in his uh, uh, for Copley. Um, Ludden and Foot beat Illingworth by 28 runs. Um, Ludden and Foot batted first. They were all out for 95. Um, Isaac Baldwin scored 45 runs out of that total of 95. Um, Tom Stock took 4 for 30 um, for Illingworth. And then Illingworth were bowled all out for 67. And um, in that game, it was Jamie... Sorry, um, should I say, Tom Stott took 4 for 30 in his innings. It was Jamie Morehouse who took 5 for 23 in the Ludden Foot innings. So I got that one wrong way around, sorry. So, yeah, Tom Stott took 4 for 30 for Ludden Foot when they bowled out Illingworth. Um, Sorby Bridge. Uh, this featured a very, very good innings from Tom Belfield. Sorby Bridge scored 374 for 6. And Tom Belfield scored an absolutely fantastic 208. So, fantastic score there, Tom. Well done on uh, a fantastic achievement. Um, and um, in re in response, Triangle managed to get up to 319, but they were all out for 319, meaning that Sorber Bridge won by 55 runs. Um, Tom Fryer put up a good fight. He scored 82, and Ed Denham also scored 61 for Triangle. But Ashish Sharma, he took 4 for 74. Um for Sorby Bridge and that meant that they did just about enough to get home by a fairly comfortable margin again in the end. And in the final game, Worley um, scored 266 for 8. Um, ben Atkinson, the main man there, he scored 116, so a good century there for Ben. And opener Nolan Bottomley also chipped in with 55. Um, Lewis Firth took 4 for 99 for SBCI, so quite expensive, um, but he did get 4 wickets. And then when SPCI came to bat, it's got, they were all out for 165. And um, it was uh, Adam Fawcett who was the only guy who really put any response, um, sort of like put up a fight. He scored 79 runs for SPCI. And Milton Greenwood took four for 69 for Worley um, as they took home the spoils there. So um, some good performances there 
in last week's matches. Um, just before we move on to this week's games, I just want to mention some of the uh, results from the um, Parish Cup on Sunday. Specifically, I want to mention um, Johnny Phillips from Great Horton Park Chapel. He scored a magnificent 176 not out in their game out of a total of 291 in their victory. Um, there were no real surprises in the in the cup games last um, last Sunday. Um, the only real surprise the, the the two games between the two top teams. Uh, sorry, the two games between the four teams in the top division saw um, Mai from Roy beat Copley by five wickets. And in a much closer affair, actually, Worley beat SBCI by five runs. So um, that was a tight game, but there were no real sort of like surprises as such. Most of the teams you'd expect to win did actually win. Um, so on to the next round now. Team still in there trying to fight to win the Cup, the Parish Cup. This weekend, then, back to the Premier League games and the fixtures for this Saturday are Great Horton Park Ch Chapel at home to Booth. Illingworth St Mary's at home to Bradshaw, so a local derby game there. Ludfoot take on Worley. Myvan Royd on Triangle. Sorby Bridge against SBCI. Thornton against Coppers. So we've got quite a few local derby games there actually, um, which is quite appropriate I suppose for the bank for the Jubilee weekend. So, like I said, I'm not sure the forecast that great for Saturday. Hopefully the weather will hold off for for the games and we'll get some good cricket like we have been getting over the last week few weeks. Okay, moving on from the local scene now. To look at the national scene or the national team and England um, after day one today in the first test against New Zealand at Lords, uh, 16 runs behind. They made a great start. They had New Zealand 12 for four at one stage. Eventually, New Zealand were bowled all out for 132 with um, Potts and Anderson both taking four wickets for England. England made a fairly good start, a solid start. They were 59 for without loss at one point and 75 for one. Um, Zach Crawley scoring 43, a fairly fluent 43. Um, before he was dismissed, but then we had a, one of our familiar England collapses, and at the end of the day, they finished on 116 for seven. This included um, dismissal of captain Ben Stokes on his first game as official England captain. He was out for one after just nine balls. Johnny Bairstow scored one, uh, Joe Root 11, Alex Leeds scored 25, um, and that was basically what uh, I think Ollie put was seven, but that was where uh, England's sort of like response fell apart a little bit. They'll be hoping to get at least get past the total scored by New Zealand. That'll be a major disappointment if we don't after where they were, um, wasting all the hard work of the bowlers. But it's not, you know, it's something that seems to be quite common um, for England in the last few years, really, to be honest. With you. Our batting collapses are sort of like renowned now, aren't they? So, um, are people hoping for a change of um, fortune and perhaps better performance under a new coach? Um, we'll see how they go on. It's only day one of the first test, but I'd like to think they'll. You know they will uh, improve as the uh, series goes on. Okay, next we're going to talk about Speedway, the Speedway Grand Prix, and um, round four comes up this weekend in Tesro in Germany on Saturday evening. Round three last weekend in Prague saw victory for Martin Vasilik. Um, there was some strange results in this Grand Prix. It's basically turned the table upside down. A lot of the riders have been doing well. The ones you'd expect to do well struggle a little bit. Some of the riders who hadn't been doing so well performed a lot better. Ty Wuffman didn't finish second. He got 18 points for that, and he's now up to fifth in the series. Um, so it was a little bit topsy turvy. Mentioned for Dan Bewley, he got to the semi final, picked up 11 points in this uh, in this round. So he's, uh, I think, he's about 12th. Lambert's 11th, he's 12th, ties up to fifth. They're the British riders. Um, although Bartos Smarzik won the first round, he hasn't done so well in the last two rounds, getting knocked out at the semi final stage, scoring 12 points in each one, but he still is a serious leader by one point. He's got 44 points. He's one point ahead of Magic Yunovsky and is a further three points ahead of Liam Madsen. Um, so it's quite tight at the top and we've had some strange results, but we'll see whether the top guys uh, can get back to the top this weekend and also to see whether British lads can actually have some success again and see if we can follow him. Ty can keep up with his good form from last weekend by putting in another good performance, at least reaching the final again for two weeks in a row. Um, stock cars, um, last weekend, the Odd Soul World Championship qualifying round saw the season debut of Lee Fairhurst in his refurbished shale car and he actually managed to win the final on his first day in his debut season debut so a great performance by him uh, i think he was setting his heat won the final and came fifth in the lap from the lap handicap in the grand nationals it's a great performance we also saw the season debut of craig uh, finnikin and we also saw good performances from world champion tom harris and uh, ryan harris and they're the two guys that have been 
uh, tearing the tracks apart so far this season. So good to see all the top drivers performing there. This weekend the racing moves on to Scotland. It's the double weekend. Friday evening, Lockelly, Lockelly, and Saturday evening is at Cowden Beef. So. I think they've got 30, 40 cars booked in, so it's a decent turnout on tarmac. I believe she, um, Craig Finnicky may well be racing again. His transport has been spotted on the M8 this evening, so um, hopefully he'll be racing as well. But usually the top guys are all there, so, like Tom Harris and Frankie Wayman Jr. And um, Lee Fairhurst is going to be racing as well, I believe. So, yeah, should be good action. We'll bring you an update on the outcome of the meetings um, next week in the podcast. Um, final topic for this week, Rugby League, and uh, congratulations to Wigan um, on their victory in the Challenge Cup final. Huddersfield going down by 16 points to 14, so Huddersfield people disappointed if you spot both rugby and football. It's been a, it was a disappointing weekend for you guys, unfortunately, but they put up a great fight. A little bit unlucky, and Wigan scored with a, a breakaway try with about five or six to go, and that was it, effectively. Um, it was uh, a lot of people would have thought Wigan were going to win it before the game started. But it didn't quite work out like that, and Huddersfield put up a really strong fight and a little bit unlucky, like I say. So, but well done to Wigan in the championship. Halifax have won their eighth match in a row. They beat Dewsbury at home by 66 points to nil on Tuesday. They could have won by more, but the goal kicking wasn't so great. They missed about six or seven. Scored 13 tries altogether. Um, they temporarily moved up to third in the table. York have won tonight away at Sheffield, so they move back up to third place again. Halifax are in fourth still. Um, tough game for Halifax on Sunday away to Lee. Um, Lee, who are uh, the AB Sundex 1895 Cup winners after beating Feverson in the final uh, last weekend also at Wembley. So well done to Lee on that. Uh, but Feverson is still top of the table. Having uh, drawn one game, where Lee have lost one game, which is when they played Feverston. Feverston at home to Bradford Bulls on Monday evening. That's the Premier Sports live game. So if you've got Premier Sports, that's a game you can watch this week. Um, but yeah, Halifax are on a good run. Um, they've won nine now out of 13. Uh, they need to keep it going. They beat York, but York are back in front of them. So it's a slow start they had with the victory. The defeats for Halifax against teams like Widness and Batley, the ones that are maybe, maybe coming back to bite them on the bum a little bit now. Um, but they've got a run of away games of Halifax now. Uh, I'm guessing that's because of the p pitch repairs that normally take place during the summer. And with the football season only just having finished, the repairs and um, reseeding will take place now. Halifax's next home game is on the 11th of July against York. And because it's a Monday evening game, I'm guessing that's probably the Premier League game live on TV. I'll confirm that nearer the time, but I'm pretty sure that will be the case. Um, so, yeah, well done to Halifax. They're going well at the moment. Um, like I say, it'll be a tough game at Lee on Sunday. So I think that's just about it for now. Um, we're just about getting to the uh, a couple of other things I want to mention. Uh, it's the Derby on Saturday. The Oaks tomorrow at uh, Epsom and the Derby is on Saturday. And then we've got also this weekend, we've got the finals of the French men's and women's open tennis. Um, it looks like Igor Spiontek's going to be uh, the winner in the women's tournament. I'm sure that Coco Goff will give her a good match in the final. I watched the semi-finals this afternoon. Both of them were pretty convincing victories in, victories in their semi-final. In the men's tournament, the semi-finals take place tomorrow. Um, after Nadal beat Djokovic three sets to one on Tuesday evening, a game I watched, it lasted four hours, and there were four sets. It finished like quarter past one in the morning, Paris time. And it was an ep epic game, really. Uh, I think Djokovic, maybe his lack of fitness or because he missed the tournament until the year, may have told him in the end, but Rutherford Nadal played really well. And um, I can tell you, hard to see past him winning it. Obviously, he's won it 13 times before. Um, Zverev and I think Rublev still in there. are going to have miss, maybe have some say in it as well. Um, but we'll see. But I've got a feeling that Rutherford might be picking his 14th trophy up on Sunday at the French Open. So Anyway, I think that's all for this week. So I hope you've enjoyed watching as always. Don't forget to go into uh, YouTube and uh, click on the like, share and subscribe buttons. And um, thank you for me for now. And I'll uh, be seeing you again next weekend. Until then, all the best and bye.